So I think by now we've got the idea of velocity being the rate at which position changes down pat, right? Um, and then obviously it seems to me like, like uh, it's pretty boring if the velocity doesn't change, right? So this is acceleration. A stands for acceleration. Except right. this time, instead of changing position, we're changing velocity. So, and this is the units here. See how it says it's meters per second per second, right? You could write it this way, right? Meters per second every second. And so, in this case, this was how many meters our position changed every second. Now we're talking about meters per second per second. It's how many meters per second lost or gained every second. Right. Now, what's kind of weird about that is we usually say meters per second squared. Yeah, you can write it that way, too. Meters per second squared is another way to write it. Or you can write it meters slash seconds slash seconds. It's easiest to type that. So Yeah, that's why we do that sometimes on the PowerPoint. But actually, for me, I usually go with the meters per second squared when I'm writing it down. So... Also, notice that when what, Mur what Murray just wrote there looks a little bit different from the one that's in the middle that's like all in a straight line, but that's easier to type it that way. I think it's easier to see the mathematical relationship when it's written um, the way that we've written it here, okay? So the same thing goes with velocity in x over t. So let's check this out and see what it's about. What do we mean by acceleration? Well, let's just do an example. That's the simplest thing, right? So this is our, our change in velocity from 0 to 27 is our change, and then that's our time, right? So let's just use our formula, right? Change in velocity over time. Now remember, that triangle is the ancient geek or Greek letter delta, and means it means change in. Now notice that Mr. Murray has put positive 27. Okay, the reason why he did that, it starts at 0 and goes to 27. So if you were thinking about... You know, the, the number line, it's a positive change in velocity, and it's got nine seconds to do it in, and boys and girls, 27 divided by nine. I'm hoping that you can do that. It's going to be three meters per second per second. So, in other words, at the end of the first second of those nine, it's going to be going three. What do you guys think, boys and girls, it would be going at the end of the second second? Because it starts at zero, it would then go three. Now, if it's accelerating at three meters per second, per second, at the end of two, boys and girls. It's going to be going another three, so it'll be going six. And Just count by threes. Nine. Nine, 12. 12. At five, it'll be going 15, six, 18, 21. I bet you I know where it's going to end up. 24, and then in nine seconds, it'll be going 27, 27, right? So every second that goes by, it gains three meters per second per second. Now, that is a constant acceleration, okay? That's what would happen if you pushed your foot on the acceleration pedal, and you just kept it right where your foot was. The car would keep going faster and faster and faster, and that's what we're talking about. It's a constant acceleration. Okay, and then let's. We're gonna. Do, I'm gonna do another little harder example, um, and then we'll just do a whole bunch of bust out a bunch of examples here. Oops, here we go. Okay, so so now we've got this guy here. Now we're like trying to solve for time. We can make our little uh, triangle of mystery here, right? Delta v, ooh, right? Acceleration in time. So if you're looking for a formula for delta v. Just cover that up. I can't put my hand over that, right? Pretend I'm covering that, right? If you're looking for delta T, it, it, yeah. If you're looking for where that formula is, here's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it's at. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then here, the delta here, I tend to leave that on there because we we end up with initial velocities and final velocities. Here, we don't want the initial or the final. We we, don't, we care only about the change in velocity. Yeah, okay. so before, it's okay to kind of leave that uh, delta off, not in this case. Leave it there. So if we're looking for acceleration. You can see that the famous formula is revealed. It's going to be delta V over T. And if you're looking for the time, then you're going to use Murray's rule of switching and go delta V over A. Which is what we're looking for here, right? Yeah, so let's go T equals delta V over A. Now, we've got... The delta V, that's not a problem. 
Okay, that's 343, and we can tell that that's a velocity because it's got units of meters per second. But what to do about this 4.5 g's thing? Maybe you guys have heard of this. It's the acceleration of gravity, and it turns out that 1 g, we always say, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we got four and a half of them, and I'll tell you, feeling four and a half g's is not insignificant. You're going to know that you are accelerating if you're accelerating at four and a half g's. That's 44.1 meters per second squared. So what we got on top here. So if you have g's, if they give you g's, yeah. multiply by 9.81. That's the rule here, g's times 9.8. We'll just use 9.8. Yeah, okay. now you could meters. go 9.81 if you wanted to be. You All know, hyperactive. Yeah, but don't worry about it. So that's this is gonna be our acceleration, right? We just plug that in there, All right? So our time is going to be 343 meters per second over 44.1 meters per second squared. And what we're going to get is 7.8 seconds. Now, you know, you can't really, well, it's 7.7777, but, you know, let's not be silly. It's 7.8 seconds. Now, looking at the units where it goes meters per second over meters per second squared, everything's going to cancel, but it's going to be one over one over seconds. You know, hey, tell you what, that's seconds. If you don't trust us, you can ask your math teacher. But that's the way it works out. And since we have we have time, we know time will be in the units of seconds. So so don't get all in a bunch worrying about how that's supposed to work out. As long as you got meters per second squared and meters per second, when it cancels out, it will all come out in the wash as seconds. Trust us. I think that's all we need to say. Except oh, it's kind of impressive. Word. Oh, the code word. The code word for this video is going to be Foxtrot. Foxtrot. So if We're not you, writing it down. We're not writing it down. Don't write it down on your notes. But we're going to ask somebody, and if they know the secret word, they're going to be very happy. Yeah. If they're not, well, you know. This way it goes. And it's pretty impressive that you can get to Mach 1 in 7.8 seconds. I think this is the Saturn V, Saturn IV, Saturn V rocket did this. Crazy, Very huh? cool.